So welcome to this Believe Land Media interview special. This is Jack O'Rourke, your host. Uh, excited to be joined by Cleveland legend Daniel Deveni, if I do say so myself. Incredibly sure. honored to be joined by Cleveland Guardians relief pitcher Sam Henches. Sam, how are you doing today? Good. How are you guys doing? Thanks for having me. Doing pretty well. Are you down? Where in Arizona are we right now? I am in, it's considered Phoenix, Arizona. It's about 20 minutes from our spring training facility. Um I live out here in the off season, so this is my wife and I live here. So this is our house. Home, yeah. Home, Daniel. For you, you're up in uh, the windy city right now. What's going on in Chicago? Yeah, we're out here. We're out here in the second city. Uh, things are good. You know, we're 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 mid semester right now. We're loving life. Uh, it's cold, uh, so kind of wish I was in Arizona. Um, but I avoid the the scorpions and the snakes. So we're chilling right now. Gotta love the cactus league. So, Sam, first off, uh, as Guardian fans ourselves, we want to help thank you for such a memorable season last year. I have probably taken about 15 tests since uh, that season ended, and I think I've rocked the baby handing in the test every (laughs) single time. Um, Actually, ended up with about a 70% on most of those tests, but uh, for the time being, it looked pretty cool, I thought. What was your uh, favorite moment of the season? Um. I mean, winning that series against Tampa Bay was obviously very fun, especially after that game. It was so long. Um, But we also kind of – I mean, we had fun in Texas when we clinched the division too. I think that was another fun day, kind of a memorable – we had a really good month of September um, and kind of got paid off for that. And then we were able to kind of rest up a couple guys and and line up our pitchers um, for the playoffs, which was also really nice. So, Daniel, for you as a remote Guards fan out in Chicago, you're actually in enemy territory with the division rival. What was your favorite moment of the season? Uh, yeah, definitely enemy territory. Uh, feels weird going to those games uh, as, a, as a Guardians fan. But my favorite moment would probably be Ogon's second walk-off against New York because um, I was just in an apartment at a party in Chicago watching on my phone, and, like, five random people around me had no idea what was going on. Uh, but that was a great moment. There was a Yankees fan there too, which was cool. Um, so that, and I mean, the walk off against Tampa Bay as well. That was, that was awesome. Like Sam said, after sixteen, electric. Was, yeah. I'm sure that's nuts at home too. Yeah, so. it was electric. I got uh, two quick ones here because it's not always the big moments are the most memorable ones for me. Uh, number one, you got to think. Uh, I think we're I think we're down two to Cincinnati. This is like middle of May. Season's still starting to pick up. Owen Miller hits an absolute nuke into the stands, ties the score. And then where were you for the Luke Maley legacy game? Luke Luke Maley sends the fans home happy, walk-off sack fly. One of the best moments of the regular season for me. Um, number two, I was at that, like, 15-inning game against the Mariners, like, late in the regular season, and I didn't leave. I don't know why I didn't. Um, but I stuck it out. There was, like... I know because you you came in to pitch right out of the break. I I came in to pitch. It was a four and a half hour rain delay, and they told me right right away when they put the tarp on at the beginning. They're like, like you're going in when this game starts back up. So I'm like, all right, cool, and had to stay hot then for four and a half hours. Yeah, and we get back out there. I throw my warm up pitches. Adam Fraser's hitting first pitch, drill them right in between the scaps, and. uh it was hilarious because, I mean, you were one of the 50 people that were still there. Literally 50. Like, actually 50. Yep. yep. And you could hear him. Like, ah! <laughs> like, you really you really felt I, – I felt kind of bad because that's not obviously what I was trying to do. But that was funny. And I got chirped after that by some of the 50 people that were still around. And you could, you could hear it clear as day because there's nobody in the building. I uh that game was so fun because I vividly remember like I was sitting in the first row because obviously like there's nowhere else to sit when there's 50 people there and you came back out and it's dead silent like of the 50 remaining like 25 of us were still strong in the seats the rest were at the one open hot dog vendor and I'm like out of way Sam and you turned around and like I don't know if you know it was me or not but like you're you're like why why the hell is are people still here and like why <laughs> yeah. what's going on yeah that was you're, that there was, was a long day guy. This one guy who just kept screaming Derek. It was like, like so like mm. really funny. Like, 
he was just screaming at the rest of the game. And like, I think it was, oh, uh, who's the, he's from the Reds outfielder, Jesse. Uh, I can't think of his last name. Winker. Winker. He, he Winker. was getting it. He was getting it from the fans. He was having a rough one in the uh, on deck circle for that contest. That was, yeah, that was a long, long day. I remember that. I think I had a, I think then we flew out that night. Did you? I think that's what it was. Yeah, we because we were supposed to have our fantasy football draft that night in Kansas Uh-oh. City. And we ended up pulling the trigger and starting it at like 2 in the morning <laughs> when we got to Kansas City. That's a long night. That was a – yeah, that was long. So is there – is there? No, oh, go, go for it. it. Go, no, go for it. I was going to say, is there, is there a point in those four and a half hours where you're like, let's just call this and go home? Or are you like, let's, let's finish this out? Well, I'm – I, I, yeah, you kind of are just like, this is dumb. Why are we just sitting here doing nothing for four and a half hours? But at that point in the season, they were in the playoff race. We were in the playoff race. We weren't going to see them again. And for scheduling purposes, we would have had it would have been a nightmare, I think, because they would have had to come to Cleveland for one one game, basically, probably on an yeah. off day. I don't know if we had a mutual off day. Um, so it would have been very tough. So I think that's why they had to stick around and and wait and play it play it out. So, Sam, I have a quote about you here following a game one of the AL wildcard round. This quote comes courtesy of uh, Bob Does Sports, and I'd like to get your thoughts on the quote. Um, I believe I sent it to you at the time. It's probably been a while now, if you want to let the quote resonate on you for a bit. So Bob Does Sports says on our good friend Sam Henches, I mean, would you look at this guy from the Cleveland Guardians? Just look at the legs on this man. This puppy could take you from Monday to Sunday. And there's another strikeout by 31. Wow, this young man could be the difference. <laughs> Maybe an all-time career high for me. Um, one of the, I mean, I saw that and it was hilarious. And Ernie Clement actually showed me that guy, Robbie Berger, um, probably in like 2019, maybe 2020, kind of when he started, was starting up and he was doing brilliantly dumb. And he's he doesn't miss. He's hilarious. So funny. I love the line. And I it was yeah, it's those legs can take you from Monday to Sunday. (laughs) That was so fun. That was like the coolest part. Um because after like a game like that and being a part of it, like you kind of you're you're getting blown up on your phone. Um but then like kind of sorting through all of it, and then I saw that and I was like this. This is the one that I was looking for. Like, I'm glad I saw this one. Out of all the, you you were his things. money during that. What? You were his money during that. That was like prime Andrew Miller playoff run. Sam Hunches right there. Uh, <laughs> no, that was that was awesome. That was funny. I'm glad he did that. All my my brother loves him. My cousins love watching. They they try to emulate him and style like him. And it's yeah, that was cool. So we got some questions to go around the room, fire them off. Uh, Sam, I don't know if you've listened yet, but do you have any thoughts on the Morgan Wallen album? Mm, I have not listened to it. I do like Morgan Wallen. My wife loves Morgan Wallen, so we kind of listen to him. There was one playing today at the field. Didn't love it. It was something about a what was he say, long live cowgirls or something. I didn't get around to that one either. Um. Didn't love it, but, you know, he's kind of a – I mean, every song on an album ain't going to hit. So – but I'll I'll probably listen to more in the next couple of days. You guys big Morgan Wallen guys? Daniel, take no, it I, I, I was going to say, I, I have – I probably couldn't name you one Morgan Wallen song other than the mm-hmm. one that Jack showed me about an hour and a half ago. It was good. I didn't hate it. Um, but I'm not – you know, I'm not his number one fan. I'm not. I'm not a huge country guy at the moment. Uh, but you have your every summer that May, Jul- June, July stretch where you're like, I'll throw on some Zach Brown band and and yeah, and light the wick here. So love it. That was our that was our one uh, non paid for Bob Wickman shout out of the podcast. Uh, shout out to Bob Wickman, uh, Guardians Ring of Honor legend. I I don't even I don't even know. Sorry, I don't even know if Morgan Wallen is really considered country anymore. To be honest with you. I yeah, think he's I think um, I think he's more like kind of like a pop country hip hop kind of artist. Yeah. You know? 
but he's not like, anymore. Country anymore is like what what kind of happened with Taylor Swift almost. Where now yeah. it's just country. It's not even yeah. strictly country. But yeah, I uh, I'm re- I'm very newly getting into country music. I hated it my whole entire life. Um, I was probably the most adamant non-country music listener of all time. I liked uh, a couple of the songs. I was actually texting Nolan about it. He called uh, the song last night, and I quote, the best song of all time. Um, mm. so get a pretty uh, polar opinion on that. I think he uh, was a big fan of it. I, I thought it was, I, I like it, though. I, I think it's pretty solid. I like that song. The, the yeah. last night song. Yeah. I don't know if, I, oh. I mean, saying it's the best song of all time, probably a little bit of a stretch, but yeah. Yeah, I do like words. it. Those are very big words out of Nolan. Yeah, all time. So, if if you guys could be mentioned by one singer in a song, who would it be? I I haven't given this any thought at all. I truly have no idea. I wrote it. Um, yeah, great question. Whoever wrote this, by the way, I (sighs) Meek Mill. (laughs) <laughs> that would be final sick. answer final answer <laughs> yeah down. um Mika. you could have a cool line about you like you're, like you're tall you're athletic like there's something in there like you could probably get I it could, yeah you could get a bar yeah i'll take a bar from meek mill yeah um i think like the black eyed peas that'd be oh, who? that'd be in the time because, like, then for years, you got everybody that's like, remember that one Black Eyed Peas song? And then it, like, goes viral on TikTok, and it's my line. And I'm, like, getting whatever that's called. What's the uh, – I get oh, paid for get, Yeah, when you get it down – I don't know the word. But Ro- royalty? Royalty. Royalty. Yeah. I get royalties. It's honestly a success plan more than I like the Black Eyed Peas. So, good. Yeah. You're, you know, there's not many songs written about play-by-play broadcasters. And I think you have to take that into account from the start of it um i could really fancy myself being on a kodak black song i think he could just like yeah. a line in there you know he's gonna mumble it so it doesn't really like you can make it open to interpretation what he's saying uh or mentioning about me but um i, I think it'd be pretty cool you know i i'm going on the same route with that with the rap yeah i think it'd be interesting to hear how he pronounces o'rourke i would love to hear that I would it would, love, yeah I'd, I'd i'd pay money to hear that I think Henches would be a good way to be like, Henches! <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would that's a tough one to rhyme anything with. I think O'Rourke is kind of similar. Tough yeah. to rhyme anything with it. They Jack figure O'Rourke. it out, though. They're they're professional. Yeah, someone who writes for them will probably figure it out. Yeah. So, Sam, this question just for you. Uh, do you have any uh, marriage advice for the uh, single members of this uh, podcast episode? Ooh. Um... Yeah, I think the biggest thing for me that's helped me a lot is not really get too upset about little things. I'm a I'm fairly um like I'm a I'm a neat per, like tidy person. Um and females tend not to be, especially like with clothes and makeup and curling irons and stuff like that. Um which I don't I mean I like when things go back in their place, you know? Yeah. And sometimes that doesn't happen, but yeah, I think just don't sweat the small stuff, probably stuff like that where it gets kind of naggy and then annoying. Damn. I'd like to get your, your take on this. When I was in fifth grade, actually um, my neighbor, Michael, he, he was, he was talking to me the one day, I believe we were actually chatting. (laughs) We were actually chatting Cleveland guardians, um, formerly the Indians. This is like, well, what year is that? Because if we're we're born in 02, so fifth grade is like what? Like that's eleven. So this is probably around 2012, 2013. Oh, 2013, little you guys were born in 2002? Yeah. Yeah, wait. Also, I definitely just missed the mark on what fifth grade is. Yeah, you that was not close at all. No, it really wasn't. But that's not the point. Sam, Michael told me, Daniel, if I have to give you one piece of advice for women in your life, it's happy wife, happy life. Would you say that's accurate? I've always wanted it. Yeah, definitely. I think um, also, it, yeah, I think that's true. 
another thing kind of marriage wise is everybody's I feel like mar- they always say marriage is so hard or like the first year of marriage is so hard. It's not really that hard. Like just, just be happy and make your wife happy. It's not Keep it simple. very different. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's, I get, no, it's good. I love it. I get unreasonably mad over the littlest things. I, <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm by nature also a pretty relaxed person. Um, right. I'd say I'm kind of so, angry. I, so I don't. No, you don't seem angry. Not right now. I'm having a good time right now, but you, get, you flip a on. you you flip a switch pretty quick. Well, well, I don't get mad, but when I do get mad, I blow a fuse. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a bad. I'm Irish. Yeah. Blame it. Happy yeah, St. Saint, Saint Patrick's Day is coming up. Yeah, it is. It's a big one. Uh, guys, what would your dream job be? I'm doing it. Ah, look at that! Look at that! <laughs> oh, round of applause! Round of um, applause. I mean, like, it. but like, um, I don't know. It's like what I always wanted to do, you know? Yeah. Like I grew up wanting to do it, and then found out that I could do it. At what age? Have you done guys, it. At what age were you like, yeah, I'm at baseball? Like this could this could go pretty far. Mm. I mean, I was pretty good in Little League, but you don't really know. Yeah. Um, I was pretty good in high school, too. I, I think, to be honest with you, I think it was probably like my third or fourth year of pro ball where I was like, I can like, I can actually make it to the big leagues. Um, probably, yeah, around 2017 or 18. Yeah, I, I remember fifth grade rec ball came up to play. I had four at bats that game. I think I saw twelve pitches and I missed all of them. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that, that's kind of when I knew it was. I should probably transition to the booth sooner than later. You know, now look I mean, at you. I it could still work out. I could still do the dream yeah. job. Yeah, you could. Never give up. I'll tell you, Jack I, uh, was the master. Jack was the master of fielding balls hit to left from right field. That's honest. That was like, crazy. That's true. That's true. He would make it to that ball before our other two outfielders consistently. And, and I'm not fast. He'd be mailing it in. Ah, uh, you. I bet you can run a little bit. No, you no. got some giddy up. There's... What would you run it at the NFL Combine? You think? Oh, geez. Um, what's like an average time for an right? average time for an NFL player or a huge yeah. average human for, for for NFL guy? I would say probably four. Seven. It's like a four probably... five probably, but uh, yeah, no, I like a probably like a, like a five eight five seven. <laughs> Did you? There was a D lineman yesterday who ran a four three nine. What? Yeah, that's flying. And everybody, I don't think people understand. Like a lot of like even in in the baseball world, people are like, yeah, I'll, I could go around a four three five or four four. I'm like, bro, there is a zero percent chance. That most of us in here could run under a five. I, I don't like, like it's stuff. like 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 James Karinchek is convinced he can run under a four five. He's a, he's a nut job. You might be able to. I, I mean, he, like he's he's fa- he's fast. He's like athletic and he's strong and he's fast. A four five is flying. Like I bet Straw and Rosario could run a four five, maybe, and they're. They fly, so uh, I I don't I don't think people understand how fast those NFL guys move. They're so crazy, Daniel. I Freaks. think you have the same dream job. Uh, just be just sit in sit in the bullpen at Guardians games. I think it's as simple as that. That would be not a bullpen catcher. I just want to just sit and chew gum for nine innings. That would be that would be and just chill. Like I don't I'm I'd like pick up the balls after or whatever. Oh oh hundred percent. I'll do whatever you need. Like I'll do whatever you need, but just like to just hang out day in, day out, get some handshakes going. Jack and I were okay. Jack and I were trying, yeah. chatting handshakes. Um personally I'd love I'll to use a phone charger, I'll be back in five seconds. And then I'll book it around the stadium. If yeah. I could just dap up Andre Jimenez every four innings. Oh my god. That'd be... That's it. That's all you need. Good player. Yeah, he's so good. Good player. You guys got a good group overall. 
Sam, this was a hot debate between Daniel and I earlier today. Mm. You can break it here. What is the best Pop Tart flavor? Oh. Not a huge Pop Tart guy to begin with. So I don't know how valid this is. I would. It's between uh, brown brown sugar, I think it is. Yeah, brown sugar, cinnamon. Brown cinnamon, brown sugar, and strawberry. See, I've never so had was, the strawberry. I was telling Jack I, about this. It's it's all kind of the way. I think it's what. Great, like I've probably had less than twenty pop tarts in my life. Um, that's my, that's my quota per year, I think. Yeah, I I should start eating more because they are delicious. But I just never like if I, I if I see them at the grocery store, I'm not gonna like grab them. Um, How but, do you get do you get picked out at the grocery store? Not not even not very happen. often. What? What about in Cleveland? Cleveland? In Cleveland? Yeah. Rare. I've gotten more. Actually, probably not anymore. But my first year, I got more. Uh, Kevin loves than I did Sam Hentges. Oh, I could see Dean um, Wade. Dean Wade, like a better looking Dean Wade. Don't get me wrong, better looking Dean <laughs> Wade. Uh, uh, um, but no, I don't know. I mean, especially not out here. Just, I mean, people just come up to me and ask me if I play basketball. That's kind of the biggest. I get that a lot. Yeah, you're saying, yeah. Yeah, I have. I, I I I told a lady one time that I was seven feet two inches tall. Um, just for I mean, and she, she yeah, just just to see how high I could go, and I mean she had no choice but to believe me. Like, what is she gonna say? No way! Like you're yeah. lying, because everyone every, uh, everyone above everyone about above six six or six seven kind of all just look circus freak tall. We have, yeah. we have a goal for you the next time we get you on. See if you can pull off a 7 5. Mm. See, now that may be pushing five. it. 7 5 is seven five is like once in a lifetime you'd yeah. see someone that's 7 5. I mean, Sam, I can't lie to you, brother. I've been trying to tell people I'm 5 8 for like two years now. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the worst. They is don't gonna... believe you? No, they don't. I'm, I'm six foot, and a lot of times if you tell people, who you're six foot they'll be like are you really 511 and uh, that one always hurts that's not mm. like because then you're like no i'm six foot and then you just start to sound like you're like like no i'm not care about it. yeah exactly exactly it's it's but yeah sam how tall are you actually i actually funny thing is i just got measured officially at the beginning of spring training this year for the first time in probably five years and i was just over six eight I didn't, I, I had been, I thought I was six, seven for the longest time. And that's what I tell people, but I am officially six, eight. I'd kill for new, that. New, news to me. Six, were you like, were you like all that sick when you found out you made it? You to like, did you dap up the doctor? I, uh, it was one of our strength coaches. And yeah, I mean, I kind of let everyone in the area know. Yeah. That, yeah. That's 80 inches. Made him look at it twice. That, that, that's something to brag about. <laughs> shortest, I mean, uh, there's nothing I, I mean, there's nothing I can do to control it though. Like I didn't. Who's the shortest anything. guardian? Shortest guardian? Jose. Maybe. Quan, maybe. Yes. Um, Seems short. Yeah, one of those two. I don't. I mean, we don't. We have straws. Not very big. Um. Brian Rocchio, he's probably the smallest, but he he's a good player. Yeah, he's he's switch hitter. Solid, right? I believe so. Yeah, we have an absolute plethora of middle infield. Yeah, put 20, 21 year old middle infielders. Yeah, who do you have? Not like a favorite, but who's like the? Nolan would always say Arias was the funniest. Yeah, he's 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 a clown. Arias is a clown. Um, I like John Kenzie Noel. He's big, isn't he? He like he's also. I've never seen legs like that in my whole life. So like if he, if he your is. Legs, if your legs could take you from Monday to Sunday, how far are his legs taking you? 
365 days. <laughs> His legs, he, uh, like Fran Mill Reyes was a very, very large human. Yeah. And that's kind of what John Kenzie Noel is. But John Kenzie is like a little bit tighter. Like he's like, it's all muscle. It's just, he's just a brick house. I love that phrase. Can we, uh, can we get a preview of your 2023 walk-up song? You're coming off a hot year. With yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know yet. I had our bullpen catcher, Ricky Paccioni, um, choose it last year. So I told him when, when we came into camp this year, I said, I don't want that song again. Cause it was starting to get a little annoying towards the end of the year, but he's going to pick it whatever he picks again this year. And I just got to roll with it. What do you guys got? Any, uh, so Daniel, any what's, uh, you Daniel, like, let's say for a second, you're, uh, about roughly a foot taller. You're from Minnesota and you've got a hell of a curveball. What's your, yeah. what's your, uh, walk-up song this year? Um, I'm coming out to, to one of two things. I'm coming out to, uh, transporting by Kodak black. Mm. Uh, I think it's just a, it's a good it's a good vibe song, uh, and I think that'll get you in the headspace to to go strike some people out. Uh, either that, or recently I stumbled upon the song "Many Men," but not by who you think. It's by Twenty One Savage, and mm. uh, that one that that one just gets you in a, in a killer headspace. And um, I think that's what it's all about from pitching. You know, somebody who used to who's used to pitch for years. Um, but it's just hanging are... around the hanging around the 1.8 whip mark and four ERA <laughs> in rec baseball. Absolutely, I did. I did average about because, four. when you could find the strike zone, you were on. I was on. There was, yeah, yeah, I was on. Throw, I won't go throwing any... throwing strikes is hard. Um, you should tell us about my my pitches. Oh, rainbows, man! Absolute rainbows. I would throw like a, I couldn't cool. throw it far enough, so I would throw like an Ethos pitch. It was the funniest yeah. thing of all time. It's probably hard to hit it. too. Yeah, probably hard to hit. Um, the other thing about the walk-up song is they don't really play our walk. They play like five seconds of it. So it's a, it, it kind of limits because they got to do their hot dog race and their sloopy song, um, which, I mean, you guys probably like it, but when you hear it 82 times a year, it's... Yeah, it def- definitely probably gets a little... Um, but no, I mean, that's something we were trying to push last year we'll see how they do this year just kind of get maybe like a hype video or like a longer walk-up song yeah. for the relievers maybe like you sign the camera because we'll like that. Mm-hmm. that class a video was nasty that was so sick that, you know that who, video is so cool one, the year that he got busted for uh the marijuana with his dog chris perez had this sick video like it, it probably was two minutes long it was awesome yeah. it was nuts Cody Allen, do you, so remember, cool. you know, do you remember when Cody Allen's was uh it was yeah, not down into outsiders? That was so sick. Yeah. That was great. So I maybe think... they'll start implementing those. If I'm Hopefully Sam this Hensch, year, that'd be cool. Two songs for Sam Henches to come out from, come out of the bullpen too. Number one's gotta be Philadelphia by Meek Mill. <laughs> I think that would get the people going. Number two, I'm not sure how hip you are to the current rap scene uh sam but niagara falls by travis scott and 21 savage i think it's a very mm. song for you he niagara loves. falls i have not heard that song i don't know that song i don't really keep up with rap as much as i used to but i'll have to give it a listen might be a candidate <laughs> it's a good song niagara <laughs> falls 21 savage has uh, funny lines in his verse but it's it's a good song he always has funny lines. I like him. He's, he's good. He's definitely something else. That was the voice. What are the odds this year we hear we hear Niagara Falls now? If you go to that first um, track and you play it. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know if I can break up the mojo of having our one of our bullpen catchers choose it because it was a good year. Okay. And I trust me, I I didn't I didn't even know the song that he picked last year. And I walked out the first time, and I was like, "All right, this is fine." And then after after sixty games, I was like, "Turn this shit off. This is so annoying." <laughs> but I but I had to keep like I couldn't change it. 
Yeah. yeah. What is the uh, the oh. best food to have in your lunchbox at school? Like food, food, or any kind of snacky? Any kind of snack. Oreos. Wow. Wow. Oreos. Because right. you, 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 you automatically get the carton of milk at lunch. So you have the Oreos. Bang. I mean, I, I respect it. I respect it. I'm not – Jack and I were discussing again like, a, like an hour ago. I'm not – I'm not an Oreo hater. I'll eat an Oreo any day. You're such an Oreo hater. That's bullshit. I'm not. I'm there's not. Don't, no, don't there's no. Because we're on there. You can't change it. You're an Oreo hater. I'm not changing it. I explained this to you. I die on the this... cross. Die on this cross. This is your cross to take up. It's die on the hill, not die on the cross. Same thing. But you're, you're the. You're, it's your. Fuck you. <laughs> it's Oreos. It's a, it, no. Right. I'm right. an Oreo you guy. Didn't, the day I you, didn't even, you didn't even answer Oreos. That wasn't even your answer. You just oh, like it. Even debated. Like, so I, like, I got I got Oreos since we were like five years old. I said Oreos, and I I think I know where Dan's going. He's either going to choose Goldfish or Cheez Its. I do love a I love a Cheez It. Cheez Its are really fire. What, what's Cheez-Its your what's your what's your answer, Dan? I was going to say Cosmic Brownies. The the wow. Brownies. Okay. Wow. That's good. I mean, I'd take those for sure. Here's the issue about those, though, and and I think here's where you win with the Oreos, is because you can enjoy Oreos your entire life. I think once you hit the age of, like, 13, 14, Cosmic Brownies are really slowing down the body. You mm-hmm. can't eat yeah. those. You're going to... Yeah, you might not- but I mean, in this theoretical situation, we're kids. But that, that's a good answer. I'll take oh. that. Any kind of Little Debbie snack? Zebra cakes? Zebra cakes are good. Zebra cakes, Zebra cakes are good, too. I might have to go. I might have to go. Oh, I have two. They're they're tied. Cheez Its and like the the pretzel goldfish. You remember the pretzel goldfish? Those things were on mm. in the purple were, bag. Yep. Yep. That's pretzels. Pretzels are under. I love pretzels. They're so good. Eat them with anything. Oh, Eat them yes. by themselves. They're good. Solid food. Jack, were you a big pizza goldfish kid? No, never had them. In- Frankly, they, they they sound disgusting, but I love the combos, like the pizza combos. That's what I was going to say. You like the combos, so I feel like you like, like the goldfish. They're a go-to gas station staple for me. Yeah. Good one for you guys to marinate on here. Uh, kiss, Mary kill. Breakfast, lunch, dinner. Easy. You guys got your answers already? Yeah. Um. um oh, he's got to think. Well, okay. Is it the food or is it the actual time of day meal? It's the f- like food, in my opinion. Okay. The f- okay. Got my answer. The food itself. Okay. Um, I'm gonna marry breakfast. I'm gonna kiss uh, dinner and kill lunch. Is that the third option? Kill. I kill. Yeah. I'll, I'll I'll kill lunch. See, I'm I'm similar. I'm killing lunch. But I'm ki- I'm kissing breakfast and I'm marrying dinner. Mm. It's a good dinner. I mean, that'll take you to the moon and back. Yeah, you think I gotta just change it up because no one else did. Um, it's a podcast about controversy, embrace debate. Um, I'm gonna marry lunch. I'm gonna kill breakfast and uh, I'm gonna kiss dinner. Look at some of the things that lunch has provided for your life. Have you raised your hand if you've had a bad PB and J before? I don't see a single hand. That's all I needed. That the defense rests its case. That's for, I, I get that. I get the versatility of lunch. Because you, you, you can kind of go. Really. You, 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 you could you could do either. But is there is there like a better feeling than like for you guys waking up on a Saturday morning and you get a cup of coffee and you go to like the local diner? Yeah, that is. Get, yeah. Getting getting ready for college football Saturday in the fall with a couple cups of coffee and a nice little. Denver omelet with some hash browns. Are you what's kidding that, me? What's a, what's a Denver omelet? Or just any kind of that was the first omelet I thought of. I think uh, it's I like don't, pep, I don't know pep, pepper, ham, peppers, cheese, onion. I think. I just never eat breakfast. I'm never awake for it. I I wake up. No the- way. Well, you got to you got to get some breakfast in your life. I know. That's what, 
I just can't fathom never waking up and like smelling bacon or sausage or going somewhere and, yeah. and it's early and you get a good waffle or something like that ever again. Chicken and waffles? Oh yeah. I, I I'm also very very biased. I I my favorite food is probably in egg, like eggs. Yeah. So you ever do the the I egg love in a bowl? Egg in a bowl? What's that? No egg in a hole where like you put it in the toast and you cook it. Oh, I have never done that. No, it's so good. That sounds it sounds good. I, I highly recommend it. I'll send you a link on how to make it. I think it's sounds like great. Months, it's very very good. Are Quick you and uh, easy? Are you, scrambled? are you scrambled or are you like over easy or over medium? He's got to be scrambled. There's no way that man is not scrambled. It's either a scrambled or an over medium. I like a little bit of a little bit of juice in the yolk if I'm eating it with some some toast or something, but. Yeah. There's if there's no bread involved, then it's scrambled. You actually it's, calcula- it's calculated, boys. You seem like such a breakfast guy. I would love to have just like breakfast with you. I mean, you gotta think this guy's rolling out the eggs, the every little thing, every detail. I, I imagine the, the other, the personal really picture of chocolate milk for Sam Hedges. The yeah, the other thing with breakfast is you can you can eat it whenever you want. You could have breakfast for dinner, yeah, breakfast bro. for lunch. Yeah, like make you can't have spaghetti at 7 a.m. That's true. Yeah. Oh, I might be flipping you here, Jay. I know. You might be a, you might be a breakfast guy in a couple of weeks. I, I might be in a couple of weeks. You never know. Sam, Sam, you seem like a massive Keurig guy. Do you love a Keurig? I have I do have a Keurig. I we actually got um for on our wedding registry, we got a Nespresso wow. Espresso okay. maker. And and, and I, I don't tap into it too much just because I kind of like to – I don't really know how to work it, one. Um, mm-hmm. Two, I think the pods are a lot more expensive. Like each cup of coffee is a lot – it's like 150 compared to Keurig, which is like 30 cents. Right. But, yeah, I do – I hit the Keurig, like the Keurig. It's easy. I feel like you click that pod and you're ready to go for the day. Yep. I could see you being a – I love how we're just going through theoreticals in Sam Hench's life now. It's just what this developed into. you got to be a massive Brita guy. Like, if the Brita is not refilled to the top at all times, you're pissed. <laughs> if we have one, yeah. We we have uh, – yeah, we used to – I used to have one of those. I think when I lived with Nolan, there was a Brita. No chance love, that ever refills the Brita. He's a scumbag. I, I love refilling the Brita. I, I I drink a ton of water as well. But now we got – we have, like, the little thing inside the fridge where you just put your – water bottle and it fills it up it's nice that's, what's, that's your, what's your go-to thing you cook when you guys are obviously you don't eat out all the time like i'm sure we do in college like what's your go-to meal to cook uh chicken rice and veggies probably it's like the only thing i know how to make i'm not a very good cook um or some sort of pasta what's the what's the best thing your wife makes her spaghetti with the, it's got like a meat sauce spaghetti meat sauce i always eat way too much when she makes it neither of us are huge cooks we tried uh you guys ever heard of hello fresh yeah uh, tried that for about a year to kind of expand our culinary skills but i usually like i'm i'm cool with eating the same thing i could eat chicken rice and veggies every day and not get sick of it i could see you just marking the calendar for the day the spaghetti comes out the meat sauce <laughs> yeah it's good yeah. I feel like your chicken rice veggie thing, you gotta have some sort of sauce on that. Or is that are yeah. you like why? Um I will die I mean, if I, Sam Hentges is not a soy sauce guy. <laughs> I put the rice in the rice cooker, takes forty five minutes. I got frozen veggies, yes. put those in the microwave for four minutes, chicken thawed out, it cooks probably takes about six minutes to cook. Time it out, throw some salt on there. Uh, teriyaki sauce for the or teriyaki sauce for the chicken, and yeah. a whole bunch of and a whole bunch of soy sauce. I knew that was coming. I mean, there is no yep. chance. I actually, I think I would have become like a who's a ra- I would have been like a Tigers fan if he wasn't a soy sauce guy. You, yeah. you got to go down with your guys. Soy sauce, that's great. You guys are you guys have great calls, man. You guys know me. Yeah. <laughs> Good guesses. So if you guys designed the Guardian City Connect jersey, which I believe is supposed to come out this year, I could be wrong about that. Take me really? through what it would look like. Wow. 
Are they well? That you well, you don't have to say anything. Like you have you seen them yet, or like have they designed them? So you're. I just, haven't seen. Like, I have. I haven't even heard about that. Is that is that really we're we're getting jerseys this year? I think they're phasing them all out. The rest of them out this year. Yeah. I don't know, man. Maybe uh. I mean, you got to put that little statue on the bridge, like the guardian thing, somewhere on the jersey, right? Um, as far as color, uh, aren't all the City Connect jerseys, the pants and the jersey are the same color? A lot of them are. I don't think they have to be, though. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think it's every one, but they've done that. Like well, Most the of them are. If, I actually can't think of one that isn't like that now. But... Yeah. Isn't Boston? Uh, Bo- oh, Boston's, Boston's not. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Would you would navy navy pants and a navy jersey? That be cool. I don't even know. I yeah. like I, I I don't like most of the city connect jerseys. I feel like I don't either. Um, like the uh, the white socks, the the all black ones. Yeah, I think dark, dark look dark baseball pants are weird. Yeah, they they look weird. I like I know, the uh, Boston the Boston ones are weird though, and they look cool. Go ahead, Dan. If they put a I like guitar on these jerseys, I'm gonna be pissed. That's oh, you don't want the guitar? No. Um, what would you do? Your design, Daniel. I I was gonna say my design. Like we were texting about that a while ago, and your design. That's the best thing I've heard so far. I think. I think so. It's the it's the light blue, right? Yeah. Should I yeah. present it to the uh, the room? I think you go uh like a light not not quite baby blue but like a a powder blue maybe is the right word around there ish um with gray as the accent mm. and uh, cuz I don't we already have the red we got the white we got the we got all the cool colors you don't really want to do a gray one so that's why I think the powderish blue color Originally I wanted it to be the Forest City which is our nickname but the Cavs kind of did that with their city jersey so I don't want to steal from them so I think we go with the sixth city, which is Cleveland's other nickname. It's all we really got. Um, it's kind of a shitty nickname. It just means we were the sixth biggest city for like 100 <laughs> years ago. But I think it like it looked cool with like a like a big S and then a cross. That would work. You put the I think that'd be dope. On. Yeah, Pow- I think it looked cool. Powder blue. Powder blue is a good color. I love for powder jerseys. Blue. Yeah. Oh, we had two more. Uh, where did the nickname Honch originate? Um, in high school, it kind of evolved. It started as uh, Henchy and then transformed into Hench. And then people just, I don't know where they went with it, but they just started calling me Honch. Um, then when I got an Xbox a couple years later, my, my, uh, gamer tag was Dr. Honch. And not sure why I picked it, to be honest with you, just because people called me that and I thought you had to have, like add something cool to it for your gamer tag. So you got the PhD. And the what? They so got the PhD to it. Yeah. So I had yeah. And yeah, some people some people in the clubhouse do still call me that. It's more high school friends and, and old friends um from back home. That do it, but what uh what yeah, games are you kinda, on the Xbox? What games? Um I've been playing mostly Madden over the last couple of years. I I got into that would have been twenty twenty. I was playing COD, the Warzone. Got on that Fortnite before that and then the COD Warzone. Um Madden. I like NHL. Not a big FIFA guy. Yeah, FIFA stinks. Um, it's just like a slower NHL, you know. Yeah, which would make it not fun. So it makes it fun. Yeah, best. yeah, yeah. You put all the sliders up on NHL too, and you got guys buzzing around at a million miles an hour, and yeah, final yeah. scores thirteen to twelve. Those games are fun. They're the best with the uh, the big hitting too. Yeah. High oh yeah. Then, uh, Fifty-five hits a game. Yeah. 50 shots, 50 hits. That's where you got to go down. Yep. So, Sam, last question uh, we got for you. We'll go around here. Favorite movie or TV show you've watched recently? Anything you got for the people at home? 
Um, I've I'm trying to think of the names of the TV shows. You you guys can rip it first. I'll think of one. Um, you got it. No, I'm gonna look up the name of this. Set, so you go. Uh, Dana, I know you love this movie. I just watched it last week. Whiplash. Uh, I watched it again. I think the third time ever. Uh, Miles Teller, J.K. Simmons. Is that Simmons or Simons? J.K. Simmons. Simmons. It's really, really good movie. Uh, I highly recommend for anyone who has not watched it yet. Um, can watch it on oh, Netflix. Is, no, is it on Netflix? Yeah. Oh, well, shit. I paid for Showtime. Don't have a lot of money. I can't be doing that. <laughs> I was, uh, I was going to say last week, me and my roommate watched the first episode of that new golf documentary, Full Swing on Netflix that like follows mm. the PGA. And it's kind of like inside what all goes down. It's pretty, it was pretty good. I'm a big Justin Thomas fan now because of that. Uh, so I've, I've always, I like that too. And I watch that and I've always been a big JT guy. Um, Cause he just, he just seems so chill. Have you um, met him I, during the waste management? No, I haven't. I haven't met him. But I did. I watched him play at the waste management. Yeah. He's just little. Those guys are little. And they just hit nukes. It's pretty crazy. Um, I watched a movie. It was also with Miles Teller. I think it was on Netflix. It was with one of the Hemsworths. Um, something... I forget the name of it. Bird, bird something. It was where um, this guy was like testing drugs on humans and like see, like putting them in a room and seeing their reaction to different drugs, acting as like a big pharmaceutical head guy. And he was just like this sick, twisted, weird guy. <laughs> it was pretty good, though. I watched, um, watched it a couple weeks ago. Spiderhead. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, I liked it. Um I, I I yeah, I've also I like the I think it kind of seemed is kind of sweeping the Netflix scene is the like the crime docu series. I true love crime. Those, dude. Yeah, I usually crush those. I listen to true crime podcasts, um like watching the documentaries. It's just so like there was one, I don't remember the name of it, but it was about college kids and like college murders on campus. And like going through the whole thing and how they got their suspect and brought him into custody and just breaking that whole thing down. It's so interesting, I think, to me. Yeah. It's like I think it's just crazy. Uh, the one Idaho guy, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. That's yeah, a- that was a that was a big one. Yeah. It sucks that's how it comes out. It's a very, very somber. No, I think we almost gotta do a mini question because that's just way too sad to end a podcast. Yeah. No. You know, my bad. Uh, it's, it's, it's 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 fun to listen to though. It's like oh, it is. It's very like it's, it's very engrossing. One hundred percent. It's it it's interesting. It's like always. It it's always crazy to me how humans can do that to other humans. Yeah, um, I don't know how you. Do it's that. like yeah. We just started one about a a three year old who got abducted in oh. Portugal, which is yeah, like a big. That's so, like, like that's crazy. Or, you do more stuff at night when you're in Arizona just because like it's so hot outside? More stuff? Like do you like to, like marinate during the day and like go outside at night or like if you like do like daily activities? Uh yeah, I mean it's probably 65 or 70 degrees out right now. It's not too hot to do anything. Oh, okay. Um during the summer though, yeah, it gets it's kind of like winter in the Midwest where you try to avoid being outside as much as you can. Yeah, it's it sucks um, here. Stay on there as long as you can. Yeah. You're used to it though, the Minnesota weather. Oh yeah. Yeah, I've I've had some crazy winters. You play you played hockey growing up, right? Yeah. Hockey and football. I think it's so funny. There's a I'm sure you know this. Um there's like there's a Sam Henches on the wild. Yeah. Like what I are know. they that? And the the craziest part is he grew up ten minutes from where I grew up actually and I and I didn't know and he's only like two years younger than me maybe a year younger than me and I never played him in hockey 
Never played him in baseball. Um, he went to a private high school. And the, and the first time I ever heard his name or, like, knew about him is when the Minnesota Wild drafted him. And then I was just like, this is great. Like, it was legitimately 10 minutes down the road from where I grew up. That's cool. um, But, yeah, I do – his <laughs> – I, I may have told you this before, but his mother has sent me DMs on Twitter, I think it is, or Instagram, of like articles about him, thinking that she's sending it to her son. Oh, she sent him. Yeah, she's sending me these like hockey articles about her son, the hockey player, and she sent me like three or four of them, and then I finally was just like, "I'm sorry, Miss Hentges, but I'm not who you think I am." Like I'm. Not, not your, your son. Yeah. You should, have, you should have ripped like a thanks, mom. Yeah. Thanks, Ma. No, that's funny, but no, he's I, I talk to him every once in a while. I've never met him in person, but it's kind of cool to follow him in his story. What are the odds? Like two guys, same name, play and like I don't know. the odds of yeah. playing pro sports in general are so right. Low. Like right. two guys right by each other, same exact name, like yeah, it's yeah. like those. You guys seen like the? I saw it on TikTok. Like, there's this like, there's two minor league pitchers with like the exact same name who look exactly alike. Mm-hmm. You saw that thing, yeah. like orange hair and like, like a beard, crazy and orange hair and glasses. Yeah, they look identical, but they're not related. It's weird. I yeah. think it's like Sam and Matt Damon. Like, how do you how do you get that? I think one of them. Is a pitcher for the A's, right? Yeah, one's A's, one's Royals, I want to say. Like the Royals minor league system. Yeah. Something like that. But yeah, Sam, uh, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure. Always a good time having you on. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Mm-hmm.